Today, I'm going to tell you, my lovely viewers, a wonderful improvised children's story. Now, this story is about Sir Thomas. He was a very... He was a posh kid, but um, he was born in medieval times. And although he was a posh kid, he came from a poor family. And he was so posh because he would stay after school and he would read up on all of the ancient histories and myths that our species have accumulated over time. And um, they would always write the, the speech phonetically because that was just part of their culture and that's how he picked up his, his posh little accent. So one day he goes to his mother and he says, Mum, I'm really sick and tired of just being a poor little kid, so I'm going to go out there, I'm going to seek adventure and I'm going to hunt myself the mighty flying mammoth. And she turned to Thomas and she said, Thomas, I don't approve of this at all. And th this is a... This is a society where all of the women had very sexy, masculine, husky voices. So she said to Thomas, Thomas, no, I disapprove of this entirely. Your father went hunting these flying woolly mammoths before and he came back just a speck of a man, like a tiny little dusty speck. He floated his way back home just to tell me he wasn't going to be around anymore. And it was the saddest day of my life. So, Thomas, I don't want you hunting these woolly mammoths. But if you do, here is his... <laughs> if you do, here is his magic woolly mammoth hunting spear. Here you go, Thomas. And Thomas, he was ecstatic. He jumped with joy and he said, Oh, thank you, Mum. I'm going to go and find this woolly mammoth and I'm going to kill him with this magic spear. Well, Thomas, that's great, but I'm not going to tell you what magical properties that spear has, okay? So I want you to go out there and just do your best. But if you die and you come back another speck, I'm gonna be so pissed off. And with that, Thomas left. He packed up all of his possessions and he was one of those kids that liked to collect little buttons, little bits of fluff, and maybe some flowers that he just walked around and he thought they looked cool. He crammed them in his pocket. So he took these dry little flowers with him as well. And he went to the lair of the flying woolly mammoth. It took him only five minutes because it was right next to his house. It was like a big mountain though. It was right next to his little wooden shack. And he climbed and he climbed and he climbed. But it still took him five minutes. And then there he was at the flying woolly mammoth's lair. And he could smell it. They smelt like elderberries because that was their favourite thing to eat, apart from people who were fathers. And that made Thomas a little scared. And he thought to himself, you know what, maybe this is a terrible idea. I don't think I should do this. But just then, he heard this great bellowing <coughs> sound. And he turned around and the flying woolly mammoth was right behind him. He was halfway up the mountain and the mammoth was flying directly behind him, looking really confused. It wasn't angry, just confused, because it hadn't seen little boys around here before. It tended to just be the older men that would come and try and hunt these mammoths. So when it saw him, you know, he thought, maybe this kid isn't, isn't going to cause me any harm, so he just kind of flew away. So Thomas realised that he was still actually outside the woolly mammoth slayer even though he was on the wall. Because for some reason, he just wanted to keep climbing. He was one of those kids. He loved to climb. So he got off the wall and he went into the mammoth's lair. And all throughout, it was lined with these little rotted elderberry husks. Because although the mammoths liked to eat elderberries, they were very greedy. And they used to collect far too many. And they wouldn't eat them all. Because it kind of messed with their digestion there. A little sadistic, those guys. And he walks through past all of these elderberry husks. And then he comes into this side chamber in the lair. And it seems kind of homely. There's some small carved pieces of wood that could have even been a toy, you know? And he saw these two big hay piles. 
one a lot bigger than the, the other. And that must have been where the, the adult woolly mammoth stayed. And the smaller one, there were signs of little bones, little things like that. And he saw something that looked just like a rusk that all the other kids at the school used to bring. Because for some reason, he was in a class with lots of babies. Because he, was, he wasn't very smart. Even though he read books, he was a little thick. He's like one of those guys that watches loads of movies and he can critique the hell out of those movies. But anything outside of that, not so smart. So he goes into this chamber and he starts to realise, oh, they're not just monsters after all. This, this mammoth has a little child. And, you know, maybe it had a, a lover or a, a partner in the past. But he couldn't see any signs of it anywhere at all. And then, just kind of glancing around the chamber, he noticed some scratching on the wall. And it looked like the writing that he found in his books. It wasn't written in plain English, it was written phonetically, like the dialogue. And he read it, and it was a little poem. Kind of a romantic poem. It sounded like it was... You know, it was about that, that little baby mammoth's father. So Thomas realised he shared something in common with the, with the mammoths. And he thought maybe he's not going to kill them after all. Which is nice when you decide you're not going to kill something. But when he came to that conclusion, he turned around again and the, wool and the woolly mammoth was right behind him. And it looked really angry this time. It thought... This little child, oh, he's a lot more dangerous than I thought before. I thought he was just climbing the mountain, going past my lair. But I come in here, and he's right near my little baby creature's hay patch. You know, it really steams me up. I don't like it at all. And with that, the mammoth raised its two big hoof-like things. Don't quote me on that, they might not have hooves and it braced its face and showed off its tusks and scared little Thomas. And little Thomas raised his spear to defend himself. He didn't want to hurt this mammoth, but the mammoth saw that as violence. And it charged, trying to hit Thomas and impale him on one of its tusks. But lucky for Thomas, he was very tiny. He managed to dodge every swipe and blow that the mammoth gave to him and he snuck up behind him but he was terrified he was screaming all the way he was <coughs> and that was when the magic in the spear activated because it was enchanted with such a spell that was only triggered by the fear of a small boy called thomas you might think that's convenient but not for his dad that's why his dad's dead and he started to run away, but the spear flew out of his hands and span around in the air, swirling and swirling, getting faster and faster each time. And then it went <laughs> straight for the mammoth's heart. Thomas turned around, tears streaming down his face. And he looked right in that mammoth's eyes and he saw the connection. He shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't have gone to avenge his father. That was a terrible idea, like his mum said. So Thomas went all the way back the, down the mountain, all five minutes of it, and he said to his mum, Mum, I've just killed the bloody mammoth. And his mum slapped him around the face and said, You stupid little twat, I told you not to do it. And they all lived happily ever after. There you go, thank you very much for listening. If you liked that, subscribe, because I intend to do these more, because these are a nice little practice for me. Shut up. Thank you very much.